declare committee to order. I think it is apparently likely that uh, I will be the only one in attendance, Paul for us to chair. And so items that we vote on will be recommendations of the chair. Um, why don't we begin with the uh, public comment. Hello, caller with the last number 1108. Can you please? Yes, sir. Can you please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on? Yeah, Daniel Gus, all items, including general, please. Okay, you have three minutes. Okay, great. Um, uh, council members, item number two, the budget discussion just took effect last week. Uh, this didn't get approved a month ago, and trying to push it through now is the type of thing which makes the public question. The honesty and integrity of city council, it feels like just another shell game. That's item number two. Item number four, Juneteenth is a very, very important commemoration. But if the city is going to make it a legal holiday, it needs to explain in no uncertain terms why it would result in a paid day off for the Jewish Holocaust, the Armenian Genocide, Indigenous Peoples Day, do or do not get paid holidays off also. Um, city council must not, must not play favorites when it comes to tragedies such as these. And please try to keep that in mind, but it's a very, very important holiday. Items number five and six, a pathway to citizenship. Since when does the city of Los Angeles, let alone the county or state, have any oversight of citizenship? It cannot provide any pathway. This is a federal issue. In the same way that you prevent people from making comments at meetings about items not under the city's purview, the city of L.A. has nothing to do with creating or enabling pathways to citizenship and the very way that this is worded, it may be very well intended by Mr. Steele, but the very way it's worded uh, is almost certain to draw a challenge. The city of Los Angeles has nothing to do with citizenship. Uh, number seven is a no-brainer. If you want animals to get out of the city's custody, then make it easier for people to reclaim their four-legged loved ones. Further, the city should refund those fees going back to the first day of the pandemic. Any fees paid to the city under these circumstances should be refunded to be fair to everyone. Uh, I'm going to get an early jump start on my general public comments, and I'll get out of your way. Uh, animals are suffering on Skid Row, giving homeless people and addicts uh, pop-up tents to keep their animals, including cats, contained but in the heat only furthers their suffering and the likelihood of heat stroke or death. So it is well intended that you're giving them pop-up tents, but it is enabling it is equipping their suffering, and I would suggest that maybe Councilmember Caress come down and take a walk through Skid Row with myself and Ingrid Terrell to see really what's going on here. So it's a well-intended response by animal services, but it is enabling and equipping their suffering. Lastly, the problem going on with giving away the West Valley Pound or the perception of giving it away is the fear of losing another resource for the community in the West Valley. The number one thing to do is not give away another pound, which caused the mistrust uh, with the situation with best friends. Please spread the lowering of services across the entire LAAS system, rather than closing down a pound forever and causing decades of suffering. That is where the city is having a major disconnect with the community, that people are fearing the loss of another entire facility. Why not keep animal services at the West Valley Pound and just reduce the hours of services and, and start embracing the volunteers more because that's where you can make up for this and that is where the public outcry is coming from. There is great mistrust in the city, even though its intentions might be good. I'm happy to discuss this with you further offline. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next speaker. Hold on. Uh, speaker with the last numbers for 7988, uh, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Paula Shan, general comment. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I'm Paula Shan. I'm a resident of the San Fernando Valley in District 12. I am calling regarding to Brenda Barnett's proposal to give away West Valley to private rescues to use. I know that the proposal has not reached you yet, but I do want to, to urge you to vote against it should reach you. Instead, to press to reopen West Valley Shelter as a municipal shelter like it was. 
Brenda Barnett's plant proposal will take away vital services from the community, and we won't have a place to bring in straight, sick, or injured animals. Owners won't have a place to look for their lost pet or a place to surrender their animals because they lost their home. The temperature right now is over 100 degrees in the valley, and West Valley Shelter is the only shelter with air conditioning in the main Keno area. With fire season starting, our community needs needs the shelter for emergencies and evacuations for pets and small animals. I know that forces go to um, a Christian center and um, Hanson Dam. And if her proposal goes through, it will leave West Valley Shelter um, community underserved. East Valley right now is already inundated because it covers two areas in the valley, and it simply cannot handle the additional load. Um, also, by the way, I'd like to thank Councilmember Lee for listening to his constituents and for understanding the importance of West Valley Shelter in our community. His staff, Lorena Espinel, was on every single community call with LA Animal Services. And um, I wish that all the, all the council members had at least had one staff on the call, especially the ones in the Valley, because this issue doesn't just impact West San Fernando Valley. And thank it you, will have Paula. a ripple effect throughout Thank you. all city shelters. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, next speaker, with the last four numbers, 4411, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Uh, Carolyn Ilian, public comments. Okay, you'll have one minute. Hi, um, I wanted to voice my randomly opposition to turning West Valley into a hybrid system. We'd like, as a resident, as a long-term resident of the Valley in District 12, uh, this is a extremely necessary municipal shelter. The public paid for this shelter. We're still paying on it, in fact, because it's desperately needed. The hybrid proposal simply takes away municipal services. It doesn't expand upon them. It takes away from what we have. It is the only shelter that's air conditioned, and at the moment we're at 109 degrees. It boggles the mind that it's sitting vacant while it's air conditioned. Um, Brenda Barnett isn't an elected politician. She's appointed. It will come down to you to make sure that your constituents' interests are represented. And I would also like to thank Council Member Lee, who sent Lorena Espinal to attend the meetings, and I wish others had also taken the time and interest to learn what your constituents have to say. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, speaker, speaker with the last four numbers, 7419, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Barbara Hatley, and I want to speak of an uh, off-agenda item and that is the closing of the West Valley Animal Shelter and the proposal by Brenda Barnett to uh, transfer it over to private agencies. Okay, I you have one minute. You have one minute. Thank you. Okay. I am a veteran uh, animal control officer. I've worked in West Valley for 30 years. Um, I see boots on ground need for a municipal shelter in the valley. Um, West Valley Animal Shelter is the only shelter that takes large animals, and that's large animals, not for fires or anything else, but these are just cruelty investigations. Um, we serve, uh, it's one of two shelters that serves over over 49% of LA Angelinos. So to make the Valley serve the shelter, served. And that's going to result in animal suffering mm -hmm. due to the call response time, and it's also going to... Um, put people in danger due to the call response time from dangerous animals. So I oppose West Valley Shelter being a hybrid shelter. I want it to remain a municipal shelter, and thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, next caller with the phone number, last four numbers, 5960. Please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. My name is Michelle Cornelius, and I want to speak on the West Valley Animal Shelter. Okay, you'll have one minute. Thank you. In 2000, city council members and the mayor asked voters to pass Proposition Act, saying that the funds would be used to build facilities so that animal control officers had the space they needed to provide city services and better serve their public safety mandate. At the time, opponents complained that the city still had not built two new police stations, 
which were promised in a 1989 bond measure, and the Daily News asked how the city would pay to staff these new facilities. The proposition was passed, and while all eight shelters were built or renovated, two are currently being managed by nonprofit organizations which do not provide city services to local residents because Animal Services says they do not have the staff to operate them. Now we're being told that the city doesn't have the staff to operate yet another shelter, despite the fact that the number of positions which provide animal care in above budget published on the city's website has remained unchanged since 2014-2015. The proposal regarding Westside Animal Shelter has highlighted the failure of leadership from City Hall to fulfill the promise it made to the residents of Los Angeles when voters passed Prop F. The West Valley Animal Shelter must be reopened with a fully functioning municipal shelter it was prior to its closing in April 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next caller with the last one, number 6281. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Gail Rath, and I'd like to speak on public comment. Okay, you'll have one minute. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gail Rath. As I said before, I am a resident of uh, East Valley, living in the city of Los Angeles, and a taxpayer. And I'm here to tell you the horrible shape that East Valley Shelter is in and that it can no way handle the whole entire San Fernando Valley. To start, there are only 30 general population cat cages at East Valley, and there are 90 at West Valley. The shelter can no, cannot handle the whole entire San Fernando Valley for intake, for lost animals, for anything coming in. Um, West Valley Shelter needs to remain open. I oppose the, I pro oppose the proposal for um, giving it away, and I oppose any proposal for hybrid. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next caller with, with the last uh, four numbers, 114403. Please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. The P2P, all oh, fucking items in Jesus Republic County. You have one minute. Hmm. Please no, start. It's all items. Oh, you have three minutes then. Please start. Yes, in Jesus Republic County. On the beach, okay. Now we look to the utility rich species. Since it's not for all to be the piece of electricity is poor. However, we want to know if number one is a beach or not. Number two, we have a decrease to target local higher. Yes, we support that. Everybody's locked in due to Corona. You let them out of their cages and out of their dog houses to work these fucking dogs, it is good. Number three, the report back to benchmark and hiring goal. It looks like bullshit now. We may have faculty corrects establishing you think that the legal holiday the piece of people is supported and also we need to explore the history of the n-word as well of June think is very important for Mr. Correa he oftentimes wishes he could say it but on June think a friendly amendment will not our good friend Deputy Corrects and Mr. Lee and Mr. Price to use the word nigger freely on June 10th for the remainder of the week. It is good thing. Why was it done in the month of August? What the fuck? It's going to happen the next fucking year. You people are crazy. Absolutely crazy. You crazy niggers. Now we have a pathway to citizenship number five. What about American workers, you dumb fuck? What the fuck is Mr. Price and Mr. Lee? Don't we have unemployed American bees? Why import people from China to work for the city? John Lee is convicted soon by FBI for trying to bring in Chinese spies into city Hiroshima New. And now we have my lovely general public comment regarding the West Valley Animal Shelter. You treat dogs worse than peas. <coughs> you treat cats worse than shit. We must keep the West Valley Animal Shelter open so that people can bring animals with air conditioning. Now, it's okay if you take four peppers and put him in an animal cage for a week. 
ice cubes from the nice machine. Your time is up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. <sighs> Hi, uh, the caller with the last four number 0551. Please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Yes, hi, this is Kathy Kirchner. Um, it's kind of difficult to follow that caller. Um, yes, I'm calling uh, regarding the West Daly Animal Shelter. Um, as the first uh, many callers have spoken, um, uh, I'm very opposed to the uh, proposal set forth by Brenda, which, by the way, keeps changing and morphing into different things over time. That was never a plan to begin with. It was just a vision at best. Uh, anyway, um, I volunteered there for 10 years. So I was there pretty much every day for the last ooh, seven years. So I do feel like I know what's going on at that shelter. And again, in agreement with all the callers that it needs to be reopened as a municipal shelter, the West and Fernando Valley needs that facility, especially for animals that are found on the streets and lost. The, the, the claim about the budget cr crunch now, the crisis now, uh, that's the new argument for it. Done some research, so have many other people in our community, and based on the headcount, there's really no headcount change. The organization's very, very top-heavy, so take a look at that kind of stuff. But when you look at staff, the people who are working in the shelters, that's pretty much the same. Ma'am, your time is up. Thank you very much. You got, you got the money. You got the money. Next speaker with the last four numbers, 2936. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Oh, I wasn't actually intending to speak today. I was just calling to listen in. Oh, okay. Um, got it. Um... Caller with the last four numbers, 7988. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Okay. Caller with the last four numbers, 2207. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Seeing the line. I'm just listening. The is working. Oh, okay, thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 2936. Please state your name you, and the items you'd like to speak on. You just called me a second ago. Okay, I, okay, I, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. I think we're done with public comment, then. Okay, so we will close uh, the public comment period of this meeting. And I'm going to ask that uh, items four through six be on consent. Um, I don't know if that's exactly what you call it, with only one uh, one council person, but I have no questions on those items. So, uh, Very good. Uh, I, I would like to pass those items. Uh, item number one. All right, one moment. Item number one. Com yeah, Hello. Uh, item number one: communication from the mayor relative to the exemption of two positions of utility rate specialist, class code 1681 for the Office of Public Accountability from the Civil Service pursuant to Charter Section 1001B. Good afternoon, committee chair. Um, this is Alma Guerrero from the mayor's office. And um, we are requesting two new exemptions for the Office of Public Accountability. It's for the class of utility rates and policy specialists. These positions will be part of the 150 and both of the positions are included in the budget and are funded. Uh, is there a reason why uh, these positions can't be hired through civil service? I will ask Fred to chime in on this one. Hi, this is Fred Pickle, Office of Public Accountability. Um, the term for the director, uh, executive director of the office is five years, and uh, it's been my position that one, we need the flexibility to hire outside the civil service because we're bringing in, uh, trying to bring in senior talent, and two, um, when a new director appears, uh, we believe a new director should have 
the ability to adjust the staff uh, quickly outside of uh, normal civil service processes. And will, will these two positions have the same or similar duties, or, or are they significantly different? There are uh, three levels within the office now, and we're uh, going to probably hire uh, people at two or more levels. And have you started the process already? Uh, no, we wanted to have the exemptions in place before we uh, let the headhunter loose, but uh, personnel has helped us uh, find a headhunter, and we're ready to have set that headhunter going just as soon as uh, this passes, uh, this item passes. Okay, well, thank you, and uh, I will recommend that uh, we um, approve these exemptions. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Item number two. Item two, motion Harris-Dawson, Kerkorian, Koretz, Wesson, relative to requests for new targeted local hire eligible position authorities that were not included in the adopted budget for fiscal year 2020-21. Okay, thank you. This um, is we have someone here to present the... Yes, this is Deborah Caruso, Assistant General Manager from the Personnel Department. Um, we are responding to this motion that directs all city departments with the assistance from personnel and the CAO to report back to council with department's request for new TLH eligible position authorities that were not included in the adopted budget. Um, personnel department worked closely with the CAO's office to design a template to assist departments in gathering the necessary information. <laughs> And the form, which I'll be sharing shortly, will collect two types of data. One is the cost information for existing positions that the departments intend to fill or have already filled in the current fiscal year with TLH. And the second is a request for new TLH position authorities with additional information. Uh, technically, the motion asked for just number two, but the CAO is going, going to need the information anyway, so we gathered all the information at once in hope to streamline the process and to not have to go back to departments to provide additional information after the fact. So I am going to um, share my screen now. So you can see the template. Um, I have the, the team that developed it on the line along with the CAO's office and they can answer any specific questions but I'll show you what the, um, the template looks like. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Is my screen sharing yet? I don't see it. No. Okay, let's, okay, let's try it again. How about now? Let's try it. Do you see the um, council motion report back at the top of the sheet? I can see it. I can't read it because it's so small on my screen. It's Yeah, it's too small to be read. Okay, let's see if I can make this larger. I can explain the, the sheet um, here. Um, what it asks is it goes out to each department and it asks for the TLH hiring plans, which includes their number of positions that the department plan to hire in the department under the program. And it asks questions that are going to, going to assist the CAO's office as well as the personnel department. Um, it asks for positions, like the type of positions that they anticipate hiring, the classification that they're going to be using of the targeted class, um, the anticipated hire date, uh, classification of the position authority, and salary cost for the fiscal year 2021, and also um, the source of funds. And the second part is the department is asking um, regarding new TLH candidates that they're going to be hiring, and it asks the same question. The number of positions, um, the TLH targeted class, anticipated hire date, and where the funding is going to come from, and also um, why they ask the departments to describe why there is an increased need to perform these services necessitating new position authorities. 
and explains why the duties of the requested positions cannot be performed by existing department staff. So this uh, form, once it is um, sent out to all departments, and when we're asking that it be sent out as soon as possible so departments can begin working on the process, um, will feed into a spreadsheet which will allow the CAO and the personnel department to, to work closely with departments to make sure that their TLH positions, um, the hiring plan is revealed and also they'll be able to work on the program as quickly as possible. Do you have any questions about it? Anything that any of us can answer? Yeah. Um, um, it's my understanding few, if any, of the part of it at their TLH hiring plans. Uh, are they waiting for us to pass this motion and recommend that the council adopt this motion in order to get them to start? Um, or is there any reason otherwise that they couldn't start right away in, in uh, anticipation of that? Um, we believe from talking to some departments that they have already started with their plan. So it's just giving them the formal go ahead to give us the information in one particular area so we can compile the information. But in talking to departments, we think that um, departments are aware of this and they are st have started to work on it already. Right. Well, uh, and I'd like to pass this item with the following direction that we direct the personnel department and the CAO to survey all city departments for proposed new or additional targeted local hire eligible position authorities and to jointly report to council no later on than September 9th, 2020 with a compilation of all department proposals. Uh, the report should include proposed position authority counts by department, program and job class, as well as total annual costs, eligible source of funds, uh, description of services to be performed, and any other information that may assist in ranking them. And also, I'd like to have uh, the personnel department and the CAO report back on the status of the Strategic Workforce Development Task Force, which uh, uh, I understand was supposed to be functioning, but I don't believe had more than a couple meetings early on and hasn't really uh, uh, moved forward. So if we could ask for that as well and uh, uh, prove this motion with those, those directions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number three. Item three, personnel department report relative to a report back regarding implementation benchmarks and hiring goals for the TLH and Strategic Workforce Development Task Force. Uh, good afternoon, Chair. Uh, my name is Art Inigoyen. I'm with the Personnel Department. Joining me today is Lisa Parcero, also with the Personnel Department, to help answer any questions. Um, I'll provide you with an update. Uh, in the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2019-2020, from April 1st to June 30th, we 86% uh, of citywide hires in the classifications used by the total targeted local hire program were hired through targeted local hire, which is 31 out of the 30, uh, 36 total hires. Departments with the highest number of hires and classifications used by the targeted local hire program uh, this quarter were public work street services, 12 positions, animal services, five positions, police civilian, four, and general services department three positions. Departments that use the uh, targeted local hire to hire 100% of classifications used by this program uh, this quarter were animal services, cultural affairs, housing department, city employee retirement system, planning department, public work sanitation, and pl public work street services. And as a note, during this reporting period, there was a hiring freeze, which has since been lifted on TLH classifications as of fiscal year 20, uh, 2021. Okay. Any questions? Uh, I, I have questions, and uh, I also realize that the second part of my motion on item two would be more appropriately um, added to item three. So I'll, I'll do that. To, when I make the motion for item three instead. So we're gonna remove the part that uh, 
discuss the strategic workforce development uh, from item two, I would uh, appreciate that amendment. Um, how many garage attendants have been hired through the TLH uh, program in total? Good afternoon, this is Lisa Parcero from the personal department. Um, I will have to get back to you to get the compiled number, um, but as for quarter four, um, there were zero tailage hires, but one civil service hire. And, and you don't know how we're doing on that particular category, so. Yeah, we'll have to take a look and report back. Okay, thank you. Um, Given that the departmental request for TLH hires will start coming in, is the personnel department ready to help each department to fill those requests? Yes, this is Lisa again from personnel. Uh, we have received a lot of referral requests um, within the last couple weeks, and a staff it has been responding um, fairly quickly to all the response uh, to all the requests by. Um, to, uh, providing the departments with um, the list of candidates for to fill their vacancies. Okay, great. And uh, as far as the strategic workforce development task force, um, how often has it met since it was created, and uh, is it is it advantageous to go forward with its work? Was there a reason why uh, it hasn't met as often as was originally planned? Um, Art, do you have a response to that one? I'm not quite familiar. I don't answer. have information to address that particular question, but we'll look into it and provide the response to you at the next meeting. Well, that, that does tell me that it's been as inactive as I think, since nobody uh, really is prepared for it or even necessarily aware of it. Um, so I guess you're not prepared to answer questions on when it's met and uh, uh, what its goals are. No, not today. Um, well, I think I should probably ask you to uh, uh, come back to our next meeting prepared to uh, discuss that. Um, and I'll, I'll make the motion on that uh, uh, at that time. Um, I don't think I have any other questions that weren't related to that task force, so uh, I will ask that uh, we, uh, we note and find out. Well, actually, let's hold the, the report here in the committee uh, Very good. pending that, uh, that discussion at our next meeting. Uh, item number seven. Good afternoon. Item, hold on. Item seven, Department of Animal Services report relative to the temporary waiver of redemption fees for low-income City of Los Angeles residents negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Good afternoon. Catherine Chico with the Department of Animal Services. We are requesting authorization to temporarily waive redemption fees on a one-time basis only for low-income residents negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. If approved, the one-time waiver would be available to City of Los Angeles low-income pet owners who are 18 years and older. Eligibility and self-certification of income would follow the same criteria and process as that used for the issuance of free spay and neuter vouchers, which was approved by the City Council. Prior to the waiver of redemption fees, the owners will be responsible for payment of all mandatory and outstanding licensing and microchip fees. Approval of this request will impact the general fund revenue. However, waiver costs are offset by daily care and feed cost savings for pets not redeemed and held over two days. If our request for temporary waivers is approved, animal services will include the waiver totals and related costs in our monthly financial status report. I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. Yeah, um, could you remind us what the criteria are for free spay and neuter vouchers? Where's the cutoff to uh, be considered low enough income to, to obtain them? We, we follow the, um, the annual HUD um, requirements 
and it's updated every April. I don't have that figure right in front of me, but we do follow the federal guidelines for the um, for the um, income levels. And did we have uh, an uptick in redemptions relating to the increased uh, prevalence of fireworks and uh, uh, dogs found uh, lost as a result of that? I don't believe so, but I could provide you with the um, total numbers to, see, to, to compare whether we had an uptick this year versus last year. We are projecting that um, once um, rent moratoriums do come into effect and the whole um, pandemic, um, how it's going to impact housing, we do um, feel that that's when the increase will be seen in redemption. So once we start to see evictions and people struggling uh, more with their financial situations, yeah. when you're saying we expect to, uh, to see a, a large increase in number. Exactly. And hopefully uh, our shelters won't be uh, overrun by new animals and hopefully providing this as encouragement will, will help us uh, prevent that from happening. Exactly. And to maintain pet ownership. Great. Well, uh, I would uh, vote to approve that we uh, approve the Department of Animal Services recommendations and uh, pass that along to the council. Um, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, to jump in here. In regard to item three, I realize it was continued. Um, what precisely would you uh, desire the personnel department to report on in regard to the Strategic Workforce Development Task Force? Uh, I'd like them to come back prepared to uh, answer questions relating to it, its, uh, its goals and creation, uh, its frequency and meetings or lack thereof, uh, whether we still believe it's uh, a viable uh, entity, and if so, how can we get it back up and running? Okay, very good. <laughs> and, uh, Mr. Clark, what else do we have on our agenda? Uh, that is it. The desk is cleared. Uh, that being the case, uh, we are adjourned.